The Quest for the Body, the Tomb of Alexander the Great, the great commander who put an end to the Persian Empire. He died when he was only 33 years old. Alexander the Great lived around 330 BC. The tomb and body of this great conqueror, Alexander the Great of uh, Northern Greece, have been lost for millennia. Could they be hiding at the heart of St. Mark's Cathedral in Venice? According to an intriguing theory, the key to one of the greatest archaeological mysteries of all times, the location of Alexander the Great's tomb could be hiding in Venice. In June of 323 BC, Alexander III of Macedonia, better known as Alexander the Great, felt terribly ill. He had conquered much of the ancient Mediterranean world and he had no intention of stopping. Yet that spring he had journeyed into the swamps surrounding Babylon and shortly after was battling a severe fever. Now we know that basically he died quite young, but we also have the prophecy concerning Alexander the Great given by Archangel Gabriel to the prophet Daniel. It's uh, written in the book of Daniel of the Old Testament. While the, uh, while, uh, the uh, Hebrews were in uh, exile in Babylon. And Archangel Gabriel told him that uh, he would be putting the end to the Persian Empire, uh, conquering it, and uh, he would only reign for 10 years and he would die young. Now, despite his illness, he continued the planning for his next campaign, the conquest of the Arabian Peninsula. However, his condition only worsened, and soon he was periodically losing the ability to speak and falling in and out of consciousness. And after 12 days of fighting, he lost the battle, and on the 11th day of June, he never woke up again. He was only 32 years old. Now, Alexander the Great's first tomb Alexander's top generals had been his closest friends since their childhoods together in uh, the Macedonian court. Ten years of constant military campaigning had only strengthened, strengthened their bond. They were grief-stricken over the loss of their king. In a strange twist of fate, Alexander may have still been alive in a coma, even as his friends began to mourn. The ancient historians reported that his body remained perfect and unspoiled for over a week, in the hot Babylonian summer. The most likely explanation is that he was suffering from a form of malaria that frequently ended in a coma. Regardless, Alexander's fate was sealed and eventually he did die. His friends commissioned a gold sarcophagus and gold casket to hold Alexander's body as well as a massive, as a massive ornate funerary cart to carry the casket back to Macedonia for burial. Uh, let's remember that he was, uh, it was filled with honey so that he would not decompose. The procession, however, completed its journey, and while still on the road, one of Alexander's successors, Ptolemy, seized the body and interred it in Memphis of Egypt. Later, his son moved Alexander the Great into a lavish tomb in the city of his name, Alexandria, Egypt. Alexander's uh, tomb disappears. Alexander's body remained in his magnificent tomb for centuries, a fact well documented by ancient sources. Cleopatra angered the inhabitants of Alexandria by taking gold from Alexander's tomb to finance her wars with Octavian Augustus. Records detail visits to Alexander's tomb by several Roman empires, emperors, including Julius Caesar, Augustus Caesar, Caligula, Septimius, Severus and Caracula. Caracula. Now, yet by 400 AD, St. John Chrysostom visited Alexandria and hoped to see the famous tomb, but its location was lost. The very last reference to Alexander the Great's tomb came only 10 years earlier, around 390 AD, from Libanius. He commented on Alexandria, where the corpse of Alexander is displayed. The short span of time in which Alexander's tomb disappeared from the written record was a time of great turmoil in the ancient world. Between 389 and 391 AD, Emperor Theodosius issued the Theodosian Decree. These documents established Christianity as the only legal religion and banned pagan practices. In the following years, he oversaw and authorized the destruction of numerous pagan temples and holy places, 
Alexander, whose cult had worshipped him as a god since his death, would have been a prime target for this destruction. It may well be that Alexander's tomb and remains fell victim to these purges. However, the sudden and somewhat unexplained appearance of another famous corpse in the city of Alexander suggests a tantalizing alternative, the body of St. Mark. In the late 4th century AD, ancient sources began to reference a tomb of St. Mark in Alexandria. The first mention comes from St. Jerome in 392 AD, just two years after the last record of Alexander the Great's tomb. The existence of the body of St. Mark is itself mysterious. According to Christian tradition, Mark was martyred by pagans in 68 AD in the city of Alexandria. Dorotheus, Eftichius, and Chronicus Pascale state that Mark's killers burned his body as a final snub to Christians. No mention of a sacred body of Mark exists for over 300 years. The text called the Acts of St. Mark gives the explanation that a miraculous storm put out the flames and the Christians were able to snatch the corpse from the pyre. However, the earliest dating of this document also places it in the late 4th century AD, hundreds of years after the death of Mark and in the middle of the chaotic period which saw the disappearance of Alexander the Great's body and his tomb. Author Andrew Chug proposes that the supposed body of St. Mark actually is that of the famous Alexander the Great, rebranded as Mark in the midst of the Theodosian decree in order to save the famous conqueror from destruction by the Christians. A second corporeal heist? Ironically, if this theory is true, the very rebranding brought the corpse into danger once again. By the late 7th century AD, Arab forces had conquered much of North Africa, including Alexandria, Egypt. Tensions between Muslims and Christians in the region were rising. In 828 AD, two Venetian merchant ships' captains made a deal with local Christian authorities to take the supposed body of St. Mark to safety. They removed the corpse from his tomb, laid it in a wagon covered with pork to forestall any close inspection of the contents, contents and successfully smuggled it aboard their ship bound for Venice. A smaller church initially held the remains. In 1063 AD, Venetian officials commissioned the magnificent Basilica di San Marco, which st still stands today. On October 8th, 1094 AD, the body was laid to rest in the crypt under the church, and there it remains for almost 800 years until frequent flooding began to threaten the, sa the safety of the corpse in Venice, which we know floods quite often. Now in 1811, the church removed the remains and reinterred them in the high altar on the main floor. Is there a mummy in St. Mark's? Several tidbits of information hint that the body in St. Mark's may have initially been mummified. There are no circumstances under which ancient Christians would have followed pagan mummification practices. Therefore, mummification points to a different occupant of Mark's tomb. Martino da Canale in La Coronique de Venetians from 1275 related that, quote, if all the spices of the world had been gathered together in Alexandria, they could not have so perfumed the city, end quote, as did the aroma of spices coming from the corpse, consistent with mummification. Additionally, records indicate that linen wrapping, wrappings sealed the corpse at that time. Mosaics in the basilica depict the body as an intact corpse rather than a skeleton. This could simply be artistic license but perhaps it reflects that a mummified body did initially arrive in Venice. Further hints come from the transfer of the remains to their current location at the high altar. Leonardo Conte Manin documented the event. His observations contain no evidence to suggest that the skeleton showed damage from fire, as Mark's uh, uh, remains would have been. His assertion that ske the skeleton stuck to the cloth in certain areas is consistent with the expected state of a former, now decomposed mummy. 
Alexander's tomb at the heart of St. Mark's, the final piece of sculpture provides the most intriguing and unanswered questions as to the origin of the body in the tomb of St. Mark. A large piece of carved limestone, a broken portion of a larger original was found only a few meters from the site of Mark's original tomb in the crypt of the Basilica. The block, now on display at the cloister of St. Apollonia in Venice, depicts a relief of shield, greaves, sword, a portion of a spear, these armaments are consistent with Macedonian style, a fact independently asserting, asserted in a study by Eugenio Polito in 1998, years before Andrew Chung began his research. Polito describes an unattributed fragment relating to a funerary monument with analogous motifs in today's conserved in Venice, but de definitely derived from Hellenistic world, it features a Macedonian shield with a star motif at its center, a pair of greaves and a long lance, a sariza. And on the smallest side, the remains of a sword. The block must have belonged to a large monument that may generically be placed between the third and the beginning of the second century BC. That, that, that's way, that's hundreds of years before St. Mark, of course. Now making connections to Alexander, the star motif bears a striking resemblance to the star of Virginia, the star of Macedonia. It's a symbol closely associated with Alexander's family and visible on many related tombs. The sword carved into the block is undisputed as Greek style gopsis, cutting, of what, if one extends the spear at the angle of its descent into its to logical conclusion at the base of the stone block, its size matches the distinctive Macedonian sariza. The, the lance. These deadly weapons developed by his father, King Philip, helped Alexander the Great conquer the world. However, Roman military tactics rendered them obsolete, making later Roman carvings of such a spear unlikely. Why was this carving with clear Macedonian connections located in the crypt of St. Mark's Basilica less than a stone's throw from the body's original resting place? Further, Andrew Chug has made measurements based on an extrapolation of the origin, original stone's dimension. He asserts that the slab is a perfect match to be an outer cover of the sarcophagus of Nectanebo II, now on display in the British Museum. This sarcophagus was uh, long associated with Alexander. Chug asserts it to be the likely first resting place of the body of Alexander the Great in Memphis. Almost complete, its intended occupant had fled Egypt, and the magnificent tomb lay unoccupied when Ptolemy arrived with Alexander's body, needing a temporary resting place fit for such a great king. Now, how could we know? Both ancient source material and modern scientific techniques offer multiple routes to investigate and identify the body purported to be that of St. Mark. Multiple carbon dating, DNA testing, and tooth enamel analysis techniques could be employed. Understandably, these might be less attractive as they would require invasive sample removal from the body. However, much could be learned merely from physical examination of the remains. A visual inspection could establish gender and age at the time of death. Ancient historians have recorded two well-known wounds of Alexander's that, stuck, that struck bone, one on the lower leg and one on his chest bone likely the sternum, evidence of bone damage and healing in those two locations would be reason to warrant further investigation. Lack of that damage would be sufficient to dismiss theories of the body being that of Alexander. Additionally, Mannion's observation from the 19th century indicate that the skull was intact, leaving facial reconstruction an option. Will Alexander the Great's tomb remain a mystery? Unsurprisingly, the Catholic Church has maintained an absolute refusal to investigate further, so they won't allow DNA testing, stating that they remain confident the identity based on the observations of Manin. Yet if the body moved in, in, in 1811 or was once that of Alexander, that information would have long been forgotten. Manin's records can assert the authenticity of the body interred at the high altar as being that which was taken from Mark's tomb in the crypt, Still, he cannot answer the question about the origin of the body that came from 
Alexandria. Perhaps the theory is a little more than eager speculation. Perhaps Alexander's body was destroyed by Christians in the late 4th century, or perhaps it still lies under the waters of Alexandria in the submerged portions of the ancient city. Yet certainly the mystery is an intriguing one, and the questions and coincidences curious enough to warrant investigation. We can only hope that one day the work will be done to provide answers to the mystery of Alexander the Great's tomb. Now, of course, there are ways that they can uh, somehow see the damages done to, Ale to, to this body if it was actually Alexander the, uh, the Great's by the uh, uh, bone, uh, the bones being somehow cut and having a, a damage on his legs and also his sternum without even uh, being invasive to the body. Now, this is from the collector concerning Alexander and St. Mark's tomb in Venice. Please leave your comments about this, and thank you for your support. Finally, support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.